What's up guys, it's your girl from BeFit and today we're talking about what I think is the best diet for weight loss. Spoiler alert, it's called flexible dieting and I'm about to tell you all about it. Last week we talked about how the most popular diets help you to lose weight and how to pick the best one for you. What did all of those diets have in common? They encourage you to eat fewer calories, but that's all they do, encourage you. Now I'm not saying you can't do any of those diets that we talked about in last week's video, but you do need to make sure that your calories are controlled. I don't mean to sound dramatic, but the principles of flexible dieting are the only way to guarantee that you're gonna get the results that you want. You might get results doing something else, but it's not a guarantee. I mentioned in last week's video that you can actually apply the strategies I'm gonna teach you today to any diet that exists. So if you're passionate about following a specific diet, you can actually take everything I'm teaching you today and just apply it to that diet. Now, personally, I am not a huge fan of other diets. And that's simply because most diets involve restriction of food or food groups. And I don't think that that's a good idea, unless we're talking about being vegetarian or vegan, when there are actual moral or ethical reasons for restricting certain foods. But otherwise, I just think that restriction is a bad idea. And if you offer me a way to be able to eat any food that I want and still get my results, I'm gonna choose that option. So I'm gonna teach you that option right now. Again, the strategy is called flexible dieting. You also might hear it being called tracking macros or macro tracking, just macros. If it fits your macros, I-I-F-Y-M. It has lots of different names, but the principles are pretty much the same. If you've spent enough time with my content, whether it's here on YouTube or on Instagram, you know by now that calories are king. They are the single most important factor when it comes to weight loss. So the idea behind flexible dieting is that you can basically eat any food that you want as long as it fits into your overall calorie goal. Just to give you a little sneak peek, next week's video is going to be about how to calculate your personal calorie needs, but I'm gonna go over a general example with you for the sake of this video. For this example, we have Jane Doe. She's 5'5", 150 pounds, 25 years old, and we'd classify her as moderately active. Every day, on average, she burns 2,317 calories. It's important to remember that these numbers are not specific to you because we consider lots of different factors when it comes to calculating calories. What are some of those factors? We listed height, weight, age, sex, and activity level. So that's why next week I'm gonna dedicate an entire video to plugging in your own information to get your specific calorie needs. So our Jane Doe burns 2,317 calories on average per day. If she wants to lose weight, she needs to eat fewer calories than she burns. This is called a calorie deficit or a caloric deficit. And the rate of how quickly she will lose weight depends on the magnitude of the caloric deficit. So let's say Jane Doe wants to lose one pound per week. This translates to a 500 calorie deficit per day. So this means her calorie goal is going to be 1,817 calories per day. If she eats that amount of calories at the end of the week, she will have lost one pound. It really does just come down to simple math. A pound of fat is 3,500 calories. In order to get to one pound of fat loss per week, we just divide 3,500 one pound of fat by seven, seven days per week, and we get 500. That's how we know that Jane Doe has to be in a deficit of 500 calories. If Jane Doe sticks to her calorie goals, she will 100% guaranteed lose one pound in that week. It doesn't matter what she eats. Now there are lots of other factors that will impact her skill weight, things like stress and inflammation, that time of the month, sodium, carbs, all of those things impact how much water we hold on to, which will impact the scale weight. But we don't actually care about any old weight, we care about fat. So Jane Doe, if she sticks to her calories, will lose one pound of fat at the end of the week, no matter what. This is not a trick, this is not a joke. I'm actually a great example for how this actually works, okay? Last year, 
I decided I wanted to get on stage for a bodybuilding competition and I was at the heaviest weight I had ever been at. I started at 141 pounds and I used flexible dieting as my method for weight loss and I got on stage looking pretty lean and pretty good. I lost 23 pounds and I ate pasta pretty much every single day. I'm not even kidding. I love pasta. I know what you're thinking. Sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? There's something else weird going on here, right? But it's not. Now, obviously, we don't wanna get all of our calories from foods that we might consider junky because we care about our health. So what I tell my clients is to eat a minimum of three to four servings of veggies per day, two to three servings of fruit per day, and also to make sure that they're drinking enough water and they're eating enough fiber. But beyond that, it's up to my clients to figure out a balance of foods that makes them feel happy, satisfied, and healthy, and to just hit their calorie goals. Now in the flexible dieting realm, there are kind of like tiers to this whole tracking your food thing. Tier one, which requires I think the least amount of mental effort is just tracking your calories. And so all you have to do, yes, you still have to weigh out your food and track your food, but you only have to worry about hitting your calorie goal. Remember for Jane Doe, that was 1,817 calories. So she would just track her food and make sure that she hit that number or at least a close range in that number. The next tier would be tracking calories and protein. And this is my personal recommendation because protein is really important for maintaining lean body mass and we want to make sure that you're eating enough so in this instance you would track all your calories but also make sure that you're hitting a certain protein goal because yes we do want weight loss but we don't want that weight to be lean body mass we want to maintain our muscle tissue while we're dieting the third tier would be tracking all of your macros that would be carbs fat and protein and because we're tracking all of those macronutrients, we don't actually have to look at our calories anymore because the macronutrient numbers fit into our calorie goal. But I really don't think that most people need to track all of their macros. Most people will get incredible results by only tracking their calories and their protein. Now, no matter which tier you go with, you will have to weigh out and track your food. And a complaint that I hear a lot when it comes to flexible dieting is that weighing out and tracking your food is exhausting. It takes a lot of mental energy. It's annoying, etc. But tracking your food and weighing out your food is really just a skill. And once you acquire that skill, which comes with practice, it all becomes a lot easier than I think a lot of people think it will be. Now, before you say that weighing out and tracking all of your food sounds just as restrictive or even more restrictive than anything else, I'd like you to keep in mind that if you are following a well-designed program with flexible dieting, you are eating a lot of food and it will not feel restrictive. Within the first week of clients jumping on with me and we start with flexible dieting, they're usually shocked at how much food that they have to eat. Let's think back to Jane Doe. 1,817 calories is a pretty decent amount of food to lose one pound per week. These diets that go super, super low calorie are not the way to go to lose fat efficiently. So yes, weighing out all your food might sound restrictive, but in my opinion, that would only be restrictive if you're not allowed to eat very much food. Does that make sense? Now, as soon as the excitement of getting to eat whatever you want wears off, clients often ask me, wait a second, do I have to track food for the rest of my life? Like how long do I have to do this? And absolutely not. You do not have to track your food for the rest of your life. That would be totally crazy. Now in last week's video, I also mentioned the importance of finding a diet that you don't want to quit, something you enjoy and that's sustainable. So if I'm saying that you don't have to track your food forever and eventually you'll quit, am I being a hypocrite? And the answer is no. One of the huge reasons why I think flexible dieting is the best diet for weight loss is because there's an end, in my opinion, there's an end goal. One of the main reasons that I think flexible dieting is so great is that it teaches you so much about food. When you do flexible dieting for an extended period of time, 
you gain this really deep understanding of how food plays a role in your life. You learn about how certain foods make you feel. You learn about how much of a certain food you really need to eat to feel satisfied or to get the fuel in that you need for that day or your workout or whatever it is. Because when you're tracking your food, you're paying attention to it. And the appeal with a lot of other diets is that you don't really have to pay attention to that stuff. You just know what you can and can't eat and you go for it. But I think you're doing yourself a disservice by not learning about the food that you're eating. It kind of blows my mind how little I knew about food before I got into flexible dieting. This is something that all of us do on a regular basis, is put food into our mouths. And this is a huge indicator of our health, our longevity, our happiness, and we just know barely anything about it. So in my opinion, flexible dieting does so much more than just get you weight loss results. It teaches you about this huge important aspect of our lives that will never go away. So the next step after we're done tracking our food for an extended period of time is going towards intuitive eating. And that doesn't mean just like asking your body what it feels like eating. This means using all of the knowledge that we learned while we were tracking our food to make informed decisions about what we wanna eat every day. And not only do you get to this point where you feel like you know everything that you need to know about how food and your body have a relationship with each other, you also then know the exact formula for getting results because you've done it before. You don't ever have to feel like you have to go back to tracking but it's something that you always know will be there if you need to. Yes, flexible dieting may not be the right decision for certain people, but in terms of all the diet strategies I've ever seen out there, this is the one that I think can work best for the largest number of people. The thing is that calories matter regardless of whether you are tracking them or not. If I was serious about getting weight loss results, and I was, remember I lost 23 pounds last year, then I would want to track all my food, have no food be off limits, and get guaranteed results than picking a diet that I don't even know how many calories I'm eating and just sort of hope that all of this hard work and effort I'm expending will get me the results I'm looking for. And remember, if you're passionate about following a different type of diet, you can do that and still incorporate the principles of flexible dieting to that diet. Vegetarian, vegan, keto, intermittent fasting, really anything. You can decide to eat those specific foods that conform to that diet and just track them to guarantee that you're gonna get the weight loss results you're looking for. All right, I feel like by now I've convinced you that calories are the most important factor for weight loss. So next week, we're gonna do a deep dive into all the factors that go into how many calories you need to eat per day and exactly how to calculate that for your specific needs. So after next week's video, you will leave with that exact number that you need to guarantee your results. Hey, so it's me two months later after that video was filmed. I just finished editing it, whoopsie. Um, I needed to come on here and let you know that next week's video will not be about how to calculate your personal calories. I decided not to do that video, but I did write a full on in-depth blog post about it that takes you step by step how to calculate your calories for your body and your goals. So I highly recommend checking that out. It's in the description box below and thanks for watching.